Performance reviews here. We're going to get this Kirby back together. Got everything out of the dishwasher. This just looks so much better. Um, I've had to take a few things out and I, I, I did take a wheel to the, the brushes here. But everything just looks so much better when it's clean on here. You can see that just really cleaned everything up quite nicely. Pleased with that. Man, I'm going to need to retro bright some of this stuff or something. That's got, that's been seen better days, but it's still functional. So I might just put together. The real things that got clean though are, when we look at this, this just looks brand spanking new now. Um, so I'm really happy about all that. I need to order some uh, rear wheels for this machine. The, uh, the thing of curiosity, and most of these broke or cracked, were these fans. Now this machine is a 1990 of April, but the fan, if we look at it, has a date code of, let's see, focus use of 1995. So that means five years after the machine was done is when that sloppy fan job was done. This one, it's got some cracks developing there, but the backside looks good. So I'm gonna put this in and run it, uh, despite my better judgment. And it will sound a little bit different too, so that'll kind of give the nostalgia feeling. The other thing I noticed is the bag hose was definitely replaced. Uh, I don't see any holes or anything in this bag hose. Usually these fill tubes have at least one or two holes in them. And I checked it with a flashlight earlier. It looks good to me. So that's exciting. That's one less thing I have to replace. That's kind of a wear item with Kirby's. Um, let's see what the, uh, what's the front look like. Uh, that duct tape is still kind of on there, but it will pull off real easy now. I might do that before it gets dry. Um, so we're going to have to buff all this with the grinder, and that's going to take me hours to do. But I think it will be worth it. Can see the camera a little bit there. Woohoo! Um, can your vacuum do this? How about this? Probably not. That's why you're watching this video, because your vacuum isn't doing this. Well, if you're looking for a straightforward, easy to use, and powerful vacuum cleaner, you should check out my video on the Zero G. It's one of the best values on the market. The Zero G is also very durable. It glides effortlessly, moving on a cushion of air. Check out my review in the card above. So, as you can see, I have my Kirby in many, many pieces. Anything from when I washed the bag and emptier. One piece came loose, finally. Um, to just the frame of the Kirby. Now I was polishing some things, so that that's really, we're just gonna touch on that, but that's mostly being done off camera. I think the real uh, important stuff um, right here for now is the handle yoke. I tried to restore the handle yoke. Unfortunately, this piece is just too wobbled out to uh, restore it really kind of made me sad. Um, I've got a new handle yoke on order. I might take it apart and rework it with this piece. We'll, we'll see when that comes in. I'm definitely going to save the proper rubber color. So we're gonna set all the handle yoke stuff aside as it's not really important right now. What is important is I got new wheels for the transmission. And gosh, my friend was right about this. <laughs> so he said, order Centria two wheels, because damn, that color is, you can see what little rubber is left right there. That color is almost exact. So that is a real nice surprise right there. Now these wheels were made in 2014. They have a little bit of rust on them, but who cares about that? And if you've never, if you've never done Kirby wheels, let's just do, we are going to take them off, but not right away. First thing we're going to do is we are going to pull this guy off, set him aside. Set him aside. This is particularly dirty, so we're going to take, oh, maybe. <laughs> there we go. Just going to take a toothbrush to him, just a dry toothbrush, just trying to get anything 
dust before we grease any of this. I blew this out, of course, with compressed air, but there's only so much you can do. Um, now, let's just tighten those, make sure those are nice and tight. Make sure our lateral play, it's a bit more than I'd like. It's not enough to warrant changing the parts. So we're actually going to do this then. Set that stuff aside. And that just all pops out of there. Now, again, normally I wouldn't have to do this, but with the age of this machine, I think it's probably a good idea to clean the axles the best we can. And we're gonna get, of course, just start lubing stuff up as well. But I could find my others. I don't like to use a good screwdriver for this, but we can. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of grease on all this. This is more just to uh, take care of the play than anything else. Usually you would just use oil. And again, the, the bearing here. And we'll clean up the other side here. Now this is the part that would be really a, we'll zoom in there. You just want to make sure this is clean the best you can. Um, throw a little bit of gear grease on there. You don't really need too much. You don't really, this does not need to be soaking wet. But the next part you do absolutely have to put oil on which is the shaft here. It's really essential that this be able to slide easily in and out of here. Again, cleaning this up, throwing a little bit of oil in this rather than grease keeps it all from sticking nicely. Oh. That's fine. All right, so next, you don't want too much grease. You don't want to grease anything in here. That's that's all done. We're going to see how wobbled out these are. Again, they are a little wobbled out. So again, the solution here is just make up for the, the wear with just a little bit of grease. So we're going to stick all that back together now. Oh, I want to grease the other side as well. And this is not going to get an obsessive amount of use by me, so I'm not too worried about uh, dust collection. I wouldn't do this amount of grease probably in a customer's machine, but let's see. Oh, the next thing is these are eccentric. So when you're putting these back together, these brown things. And on later models, they're black. So just keep that in mind. The, they're trapezoid shaped. All right. Sometimes these need to be reformed, but usually they're good. Let's stick those on there. Start those by hand, then crank them down. Excellent. Now the next part that needs to be greased are the normal parts we'd grease inside the transmission, which are the cam area right here. That gets greased. And of course, this 
little finger, which has a little bit of wear, but it's really good for the age. I mean, it's just, a, it's, it's kind of amazing, but it's kind of not surprising. I have found that the G3s are just a little bit better made than the newer Kirby's. Um, I put the G4s in those categories. G4s are a little better made as well. But something happened when I got to the G5 and the quality and some of the changes just were not as good. So put all that back together and just a little drop of oil right there keeps that thing not only from rusting but keeps it running smooth. So we put the drive, it's gotta be in drive for this to work. Pop all of that on there. I had set this. This is one I like to do by hand. And once it's all back together, I'll actually clean this pedal up too, but there we go. All right. So now we don't need any more grease. We're good with that. So now on to put, actually putting the wheels on the Kirby. Now that I've, and you can see that we've sufficiently greased all this on here. The wheels are the same on both sides, so that's good. Put the E-clips on. Now this came with a piece of tape on here. I gave, you know, essentially an extra E-clip. We're not going to use that but I will stick that on my bench next time I need an E-clip. You can see the colors are just right on right there. And when we release this, you will just pop that off as well. You can use a snap ring tool. Um, I found the screwdriver usually is a little bit uh, more precise and less springy with this particular application. That doesn't really make a difference. This. There we go. Eclipse on. Ooh, it's all dirty inside. Yucko. Might as well clean that why we're why it's getting a good clean. And this is one of those things, just the more you put it back together, the more you'll end up cleaning. That is that. Now I guess I'll just do that now. Make sure you don't overspray onto the grease like I did. see all of that moving and working in harmony. Next thing I'm going to do, okay good, no cracks in that. This thing can get cracked. I do like to put just a drop of oil in that and in that just to re-lubricate the needle bearings up there because they're accessible. And we're just going to take a Q-tip and clean any grease that was on the switch. I don't, I don't re-grease my switch pedals. They don't make any noise. There's no reason for it. We're doing a few things here. We're going to first retorque uh, all the motor screws. Again, it's a normal torquing pattern. You want to kind of do them cross. I'm just going to tight snug them up first real quick. Again, do all this by hand. Excellent. Make sure that spins freely, which it does. 
You can take a little bit of steel wool and try to clean up the rust. Uh, so next we're going to, we're going to be putting a little bit of silicone. Now this is kind of an after, it's kind of an afterthought that I do. Um, I usually put a thin bead of silicone around here. I find by doing this on both sides of the gasket, the gasket tends to make a better seal and last a little bit longer. Since you can't get this gasket by itself, this gasket has to be purchased with the bearing plate. And it itself is like silicone or some sort of special rubber compound. It's, uh, it's really a different material. And so we're just going to do that as well. And why, why the, the silicone is still setting, we'll put another bead around here as well. So as we put the motor back in here, Again, doing some of this by hand. We're going to tighten in a couple more screws. Make sure those are all good. Um, you notice I've put this thing on, which this is the, the way it came. The G3 uh, motor carbon catcher. So all that will go into the chassis like this. And again, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a bead of silicone around this because this gasket is a little tired and I'd prefer it not to leak a whole bunch of dirt and dust in there. The great thing about silicone is it does come off if need be. So just like a very nice little bead. And we'll stick this all in here, all inclusive as one, like so. You see it's all starting to line up now. So. There's an order of which all these screws have to go in. Those are motor screws right there. Kind of a and trick to doing this. So you're going to push that way on the frame, right? Now we're gonna tighten these screws. You can use a screwdriver. It's not gonna hurt anything, but uh, I'm torquing by hand. So those are in. And again, I've pushed forward, and now we can torque the other screws all the way down. And this allows this to make a nice, good seal up against the aluminum body. Now I'm gonna take a paper towel or Q-tip or something and just rub off any extra silicone I may have put on there. Just like that. Yeah, you can see that the gasket just doesn't make quite the best seal, which is why we decided to make it Silicone Sally here. And Let's put the fan on. Now normally if there was a gray fan, I'd change it because they're usually cracked. Mine happens to be good, knock on wood. Um, so we're just gonna do that. So first we put this guy going down there. And we'll put that on there. Now next, I'm going to put just a little bit of oil. That may have been a bit much uh, on there. And that is going to be for when we do this, and can this is reverse thread, that will make this easier to come off next time and keep it from rusting as well. We're just going to snug that on there with an Allen key. That's beautiful. What I'm doing off camera is hours and hours of buffing, so I'm not gonna bore you with that. Tune in to the next video where we put the Kirby back together and you get to see the results of my hard labor. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on this video. Can your vacuum do this? How about this?
Probably not. That's why you're watching this video. Because your vacuum isn't doing this. Well, if you're looking for a straightforward, easy to use, and powerful vacuum cleaner, you should check out my video on the Zero G. It's one of the best values on the market. The Zero G is also very durable. It glides effortlessly, moving on a cushion of air. Check out my review in the card above.